Okay, good morning everyone, and welcome to the Raspberry Pi Birthday Weekend 2017 uh, in, our shi in our shiny new venue. Um, wow, it looks like we're pretty much uh, getting pretty close to the place. So, um, it's been another really interesting, weird, surprising uh, year for us at Raspberry Pi. Um, I thought I would just kick off the weekend by kind of recapping exactly how funny and interesting it has been for us. So when we, uh, when we met last, um, last year, we had just about launched the Raspberry Pi 3, so I think the Raspberry Pi 3 had been in the wild for about a week, um, and now there are four million of them. So that's a lot of Raspberry Pi's, right? Um, we, 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 we sold about eight million by, by the time we launched Raspberry Pi 3. We sold another four million. Um, we sold something like half a million zeros as well at that time, so we're over 12 and a half million. Um, and this for me, so I'm a child of the 80s, as a lot of you know, um, and for me 12 and a half million is a very, very important number, because 12 and a half million is the number of Commodore 64s that they sold. <laughs> we think, although well, Jack Tramiel would sometimes play the third. Um, but this is really cool, um, because the Commodore 64, until very recently, had the distinction of being the third most popular general purpose computing platform in the history of the world after the Mac and the PC. So that's why I'm here to celebrate this weekend. We are the third most popular general purpose computing platform. <laughs> we, and, and, we, and we did it together. Um, and it's kind of wonderful. So, yeah, we have Raspberry Pi 3. I mean, Raspberry Pi 3 has been kind of the big, big news of the last, of the last 12 months. Um, but we did lots of other things as well. Um, we put out some new cameras. So April, we put out um, the uh, the 8 megapixel, our second generation 8 megapixel cameras. Um, we upgraded Zero um, to have a camera connector, so you actually have something small and cheap you can plug those cameras into. Um, what else can we do? We, we launched our desktop operating system, so we launched Pixel, um, our uh, desktop operating system for the Raspberry Pi in September. Um, and then in December, we brought back to the um, uh, we brought that to the uh, to the PC as well um, because we kind of have this realization you know, all the way through. Raspberry, one of the big questions people always ask us about Raspberry Pi is uh, why why are you doing uh, why are you making a physical why are you making a physical piece of hardware? We still get asked this question after five years. Why are you making a physical piece of hardware? Everybody has a computer, right? And of course, the answer to that is no. Everyone doesn't have a computer. There are large numbers of people who don't have computers, even in this country, let alone elsewhere in the world. Um, there are large numbers of families that only have one computer. And it's the family computer, and you don't want to break it, you don't want to mess it up with it, you don't want to have fun with it, you can't risk damaging it. It's a piece of family infrastructure. You can't let your child play with the family computer any more than you can let the child, your child take the family car apart. I mean, you can let them, um, both for two reasons. One, because it's quite complicated, and two, because when inevitably they make a mess of it, you won't have a car anymore. You might let a child take apart their bicycle, because it's a simpler thing, and they're less likely to get it wrong. And if you uh, and if they do get it wrong, then they're just out of bicycle and they just have to get more walking exercise. So yeah, you know, Raspberry Pi has always had that kind of bicycly feel about it. Um, and you know, we do we do believe that making hardware is important. But of course, it's also true that there are a lot of computers out there, and there are a lot, there are a lot of old computers out there. Um, and so once we had our pixel operating system, we thought, well, uh, you know, nothing's cheaper than the computer you already own. Now we have an operating system that we're really proud of and now it's just two and a half years of Simon Long's hard work. That's led to something that we think is really cute. Why don't we try and share it not just with everyone who's got a lot of but with everyone who's got a 10 year old PC uh, bouldering away. So that was fun. And we put that out that we put that out with the magpie. We did our first ever color mount DVD uh, in December with the magpie. And then to cap it off, um, this week, uh, anyone in this room got a Raspberry Pi Zero W? Woo, there we go, that's not bad. That's not bad for four days. Uh, you know, uh, we think we sold about, uh, I don't want to not make you feel special, but we think we sold about 100,000 of them in the last four days. Uh, if you bump into Jamie Matt anywhere, uh, or any of the guys from, uh, from Pimberoni, uh, they're all looking pretty tired at the moment, because I think they've been stuffing envelopes solidly since Tuesday. Um, so yeah, we thought we'd round off the year. Uh, yeah, people love Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, it's been a really wonderful introductory Raspberry Pi for people who want to get a little bit of experience with the platform but don't want to necessarily commit the full £25. Um, and, 
Um, uh, the number of them that we've seen with um, with USB hubs hanging off them, USB hubs that probably cost, cost more than the Raspberry Pi Zero, the number of them we've seen with you know, $5 computers with $10 hubs hanging off them, with Wi-Fi adapters and then mice and keyboards plugged into it. Once we found out how to do, uh, once we discovered that we knew how to do, Roger Thornton, we knew how to do wireless um, for Raspberry Pi 3 Plus, for Raspberry Pi 3 um, we, um, yeah, we couldn't quite resist slipping down onto Raspberry Pi Zero. So, third um, most popular gym computer in the Oh yeah, we did the Magpie. We still did the Magpie. <laughs> Things that we're doing. Uh, so yeah, so we're still doing the we're still doing the Magpie. Um, uh, the remarkable thing about the Magpie, we haven't tried very hard. But the Magpie is a really unusual computer magazine. Like a lot of computer magazines, it's 100 pages long. Uh, it's 100 pages long because that's six lots of 16 bundles of pages plus uh, front cover and back cover. Um, but unlike a lot of computer magazines, we haven't really tried very hard at selling advertising. And therefore, when you get your 100-page magpie, you tend to get, well, you probably get north of 90 pages of content. So 12 magpies over the course of the year is over 1,000 pages of content that we've been able to produce. Um, we sell about 7,000, I think we sell about 7,000 copies of the magpie. We have about 5,000 subscribers, we sell about 2,000 of these now. Um, and that's wonderful, and that allows us to do magpie. That means that for us, magpie is a self-sustaining business. But the really exciting thing about um, uh, the really exciting thing about my uh, is in the last month we have 200,000 downloads of the free PDF, right? So that's what that's what we do with Magpie, right? We sell a relatively small number of copies, and then we get a vastly larger number of electronic copies that we do this hands free. Um, another wonderful thing happened this year with the Magpie. Uh, we have, there is an international Magpie, there is Der Magpie, Das Offiziale Raspberry Pi magazine uh, in Germany. Did I get that right? I mean, one German in the US. Is it Dare Magpie? Um, okay, that exists anyway, which is kind of fun. So it's a bi-monthly licensed version of the Magpie in Germany. Uh, it was such a success that we thought, well, you know, we can't afford to do the Magpie in every country in the world. We can't afford to do the Magpie in every language in the world. But could we afford to do kind of a scaled-down Magpie um, in, in some environments? Um, so we've ended up doing, uh, as many of you have seen, we have these mini magpies now. So we have 20-page mini magpies um, in French, in Spanish, in Italian, and in Hebrew. Uh, and we are very hopeful that this year we'll be able to do more mini magpies. Very, very keen to do a mini magpie in Brazilian, in Brazilian Portuguese. When we look at the amount of traffic we get on our website from Brazil, we really, really, really need some Brazilian Portuguese content. Also very hopeful we'll be able to do something in Japan. And we've got some of our Japanese friends here in the audience today who we're hoping will help us out with that. Um, so the Magpie's kind of fun. Um, we try very hard. You know, we, we, love the, we love the content that we produce in the Magpie. We, uh, we don't necessarily want people only to consume that content once. Um, so we've been producing essential books. This year we did four new essential books on top of the four essential books we did last year. And these aggregate together content from the Magpie, where there's a series of articles in the Magpie. These aggregate together that content into the book. Uh, we also did Project Book 2. Project Book 1 was a big success last year. That collected together a lot of material from the, there was a short period of time uh, when we started running the Magpie, when we weren't in print. And therefore there were, you know, some hundreds of pages of Magpie that never seen print. We put those together into Project Book, into project book 1. Um, we did Project Book 2 this year. Um, if you go into Smith's, you'll almost see it at the front of the shelf because it's this beautiful kind of black and shiny chrome thing. Russell came to me and said, uh, could I have a little, little bit of extra money for, for, for foil on the front? Well, absolutely, you can have extra money for foil on the front. It's absolutely, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. So the Magpie continues to do stuff. I think we've got some wonderful stuff coming out this year. Obviously, we're going to keep doing the Magpie. Um, the team who did the Magpie, of course, also produced our Hello World magazine. And if you've got Hello World, any educators in the room? Okay, there we are. Woo! Okay, are there any educators, I'm going to name and shame, any educators in the room who know about Hello World and have not yet signed up to receive their free copy at home? Okay, if, yeah. <laughs> if you're there and you're shy, then please, uh, please, please go and do that. Um, so the Mac page, having this ability to do publishing inside the organisation is incredibly powerful because it lets us go and do you know, fun things like uh, fun things like Hello World. There will be more Hello Worlds this year. Um, there will obviously be more Mac pies this year. We have um, in the works a couple of books uh, of Mac pie books, which are not essentials of project books. So these will be the first books to come out of our publishing group that are um, fully original, fully original content. Of course, we will take those and see what else about. I mean, 
so that's really what it was. So, um, I guess a lot of you know, um, we had a bit of a surprise about, in 2012, about six months into the production of uh, Raspberry Pi, we had about, about two days into the production of Raspberry Pi, right? We had a bit of a surprise that we got an email from, um, we got an email from some guys at Sony in South Wales uh, saying, uh, hi, we're Sony, we think we can build Raspberry Pi for you at the same price that uh, you pay in China. Uh, and six months and enormous amounts of work from uh, Mike Buffett here and the audience later, uh, we started building at Sony. We still build at Sony. The majority of Raspberry Pis, the substantial majority of Raspberry Pis, are built at Sony in South Wales. They're exported. 85% of Raspberry Pis are sold outside the UK. Um, we are still um, not building those units in the UK because we're nice patriotic people. We're building them in the UK because we are cheapskates. Uh, we want to build cheap, high-quality products. We have discovered kind of by accident that the cheapest, well, the cheapest, highest quality place in the world to build products like Raspberry Pi is here in the United Kingdom. Um, and it's kind of weird. We've become, become, a, become an advocate for UK manufacturing, which I don't think we'd uh, necessarily seen when we built our first, uh, our first few units in Shenzhen five years ago. Um, oh, yeah, I'm going to numbers. Um, as I guess some of you know, I, uh, I run half of Raspberry Pi. Philip Colligan, who's here in the audience, runs, runs the Raspberry Pi Foundation. I run Raspberry Pi Trading, which is the bit of Raspberry Pi that uh, does the engineering uh, and sells the products. Um, we had a really bumpy year as a business. So we are a for-profit business, right? But we have one shareholder who happens to be, we have one 100% shareholder who happens to be a charity. Um, as a business, we had an absolutely spectacular year. Um, we, uh, we, uh, we made a profit on the order of nine million pounds. Um, we turned over about 16.3 million pounds, uh, and we were able to return six million pounds to the foundation. And that's the money that we'll pay next year, and the year after. This is the stream of money that pays for all the amazing stuff that the foundation has been doing for the 5,000 COVID. Uh, you don't have to correct me when I get these numbers, when these stale numbers, when I say these stale numbers, right? The 5,000 code clubs in the UK? Yeah. Woo! Reaching 75,000 students. Um, the very nearly 5,000 overseas code clubs now, um, it pays for the code clubs, it pays for the, the Pi Academies that have so far reached over a thousand um, educators, it pays for the educational resources, um, it pays for all of, these, all of these projects. These are all things, when you go out and buy a Raspberry Pi, you need to remember that some of that money from the Raspberry Pi is turning directly into all of the stuff that you see from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So we are, um, at some point in all of these talks, as the, the audience has to do a round of applause for themselves. So can you do the round of applause for yourselves, please? Yeah. And that round of applause was for the six million pounds that we were able to give to the Raspberry Pi Foundation from Raspberry Pi Trading this year because of, all, because, because of you, right? Um, now, obviously, we're very focused. You know, it's unusual to find out a high-growth technology company that's so focused on making a profit. It's kind of unusual these days. Um, and to find one that's so focused on returning some of that profit up to its parent company. But we do understand that we, although we, we, we love those numbers, we do understand that we need to, um, you know, we need to invest. Right? We can't just milk Raspberry Pi. We need to keep making new stuff like Raspberry Pi Zero Ones. Um, so this year... Uh, we doubled the size of our engineering staff. We're up to about 30 people working for us now in the office in Cambridge. We keep pushing our uh, like kind of engineering staff, you know, this wave of engineering staff rolling down the office. It seemed very empty when we moved in about a year ago, but it doesn't seem very empty anymore. We have roughly 30 engineering staff, double the size of that team. We can, that allows us to build more products, and it also allows us to build more complicated products. If you look at the Raspberry Pi, today's Raspberry Pi, and you look at the Raspberry Pi that we were shipping five years ago, they are enormously different devices in terms of the level of complexity of the device and in terms of the bits of the design that we've ended up getting involved in. People at Raspberry Pi have got ended up getting involved with our Bell Partners Broadcom, they've ended up getting involved in the actual chip work that goes, for example, um, to make a Raspberry Pi 2 and Raspberry Pi 3. So it lets us do more stuff, and it also lets us do more complicated stuff. It, it inches out the kind of the perimeter of, of reachable products for Raspberry Pi. There are still many kinds of products. You know, you're not going to see a Raspberry Pi mobile. Sorry, we're going to see a Raspberry Pi mobile phone. Any time you've seen this, that's really hard, right? But we can now build things massively more complicated than what we could do back in 2012. Um, we've added editorial and design stuff. You know, the, the, the Magpie and Hello World and all the books. 
um, the, uh, the resources, the, um, the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi resources, the Code Club resources, all of those things require people to write them, they require people to edit them, they require people to design them, to make them attractive to young people. And so we've massively expanded the size of the team within Raspberry Pi Trading that does that, alongside the expansion of the team inside the Raspberry Pi Foundation that does uh, the, the, the rights the resources. Um, we can produce better resources, uh, we can produce better material, and we can produce we can produce better resources, and we produce better looking resources. And we do believe that you know making things look pretty is kind of thing. Um, and um, we started on the product management team. Uh, we have progress, and so um, Mike, who was uh, the guy who made uh, along with Pink made uh, Raspberry Pi and Sony work, is now uh, um, a, a Raspberry as of three months ago is now a Raspberry Pi employee. So we have the beginnings of a product management team. And really the focus there is on making Raspberry Pi available in more places. We want Raspberry Pi to be available to more people. We want it to be available in more places. And we want it to be available through more channels. Um, so I think we're going to see in the next year Raspberry Pi being as readily available in every European market, at least, um, as it is in the UK and Germany, where it's probably the most available. So that's, that's pretty exciting. Um, like I say, um, we already did a round of applause to the audience, but um, those lists, the list of money, the list of people, they're wonderful, you know, they're big numbers, and the numbers keep going up, all our graphs go up and to the right, steeper and steeper and steeper, and that's really nice. But what we have to remember is that we are as much a movement as we are an organization. For every one of those people, as we grow that organization, for every one person inside the organization, there are... 10, 100, probably more than 100 um, people out there, you guys, many of you guys, out there in the world, using the things we make, using the products we make, using the resources we make, and using the infrastructure that we and our partners have been creating to, to, to make the difference. That I think, you know, we all agree that, well, we all agree that five years ago a difference needed, a change needed to happen. I think the change is happening. Um, I think we're doing very well, and we'll keep doing our bit um, if you'll keep doing yours. So I very much hope that you have a fantastic birthday weekend with us here. Um, I'm going to spend some time wandering around. I'm going to cut and then eat as much cake as I can fit in my mouth. Um, yeah, five years. Here's to another five. Thank you very much. Um, I've, saved, I've, saved, I've saved three minutes. Um, I would be happy to take three minutes worth of questions from the audience if there are any. Questions from the audience. Go on, someone. Oh, hello. Sorry. Very good question. How, how do we see Raspberry Pi progressing in the next five years? I think it's fair to say that at some point within the next five years there will be a new model of the Raspberry Pi. Um, <laughs> I think people were a little bit surprised. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot to um, So um, I think people will. Yeah, um, I, I think that I think people, some people, were a little surprised that there isn't a Raspberry Pi something, a Raspberry Pi four, I guess, um, uh, this year. Um, the uh, because we've done something two years in a row, and it's Cambridge, and if you do something two years in a row, then it becomes a tradition. Um, and, but you have to remember, Raspberry Pi 1, Raspberry Pi 1 was around for three years. Um, and I think that Raspberry Pi 3, with Raspberry Pi 3, we got to a, a performance point which is quite attractive. Um, and so I think what you're likely to see is the same sort of behavior you saw with Raspberry Pi 1, where you know, obviously we'll be doing some you know, long-term work to try to figure out what comes next. But the thing you'll see every month or every three months will be software improvements, right? Because the lovely thing about software improvements is that they help everybody who owns the platform, right? You know, that any, the software we, we, we design runs on the, the very first machine, if any of you bought a machine on the 29th of uh, February 2012, um, the software we released this month was put on that machine, and so it helps all 12 and a half million people. So that's probably what's, that's what's next to us provide the the platform, what's next for Raspberry Pi? The charitable foundation, uh, more of the same, bigger, bigger. Um, so, um, uh, doubling down on, 
a really nice thing about code clock now in the UK, right, is it's got to a point where it's normal for a school to have a code clock. So the question isn't what's a code clock, the question is uh, why doesn't my child's school have a code clock? Right? And so that, once you get to that tipping point, then the whole thing just runs away. Parents kind of push it out until you go from 51% to 99% very, very quickly. Um, we're kind of over that tipping point in the UK, and that's super exciting. And really, uh, there's a big goal now to get Code Club. There are, we are joined this weekend by lots of people from Code Clubs all over the world. And really, woo! Yeah, let's go run the board. We have Code Clubs all over the world. We had a lovely dinner last night with some of these people, and really, literally, when I say all over the world, it really is all over the world. Um, really, the goal is in some of these other places to get to the 51% and have it be normal, and then have to go to the 90%. Yeah. One more question, maybe. So, the other great success is the BBC One bit. You're already supporting it. Do you think there's going to be more opportunity for cross fertilisation in the next year or so? I mean, that's a really, that's a really good question. Obviously, we're very good friends with uh, Zach at uh, the, the Microbit Foundation. We you know, had a lot of interaction with the BBC all the way through the Microbit project. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like the rollout in the UK was a success. Uh, as you say, we produced, we had Code Club resources, we distributed 10,000, 10,000, how many? 10,000, we distributed uh, 10,000, there was an allocation of 10,000 microbits for Code Clubs, and those were distributed, and it was pretty successful. So, yeah, um, I'm, we're, looking forward to seeing, we're looking forward to seeing where else it appears, um, and sort of what we can do to help out and support. But it's, it's, it's great that there are other people doing little board things and they, work, and they work extremely well together. You know, there's no better device to plug your microphone into than a lottery card. However, that's right, yeah? <laughs> so I almost thought I'd said something else there. <laughs> you got it wrong. No, okay. Uh, that is true. So, anyway, thank you very much. Enjoy the weekend.